breaking right now on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m. The invasion has started. Russian troops storm Ukraine. President Putin essentially declaring a full-blown war overnight. I think we've passed the point of no return. I don't think they really believe this until now. It's very scary. I'm Denver 7's Veronica Acosta. We're getting new information in minute by minute. Our team is dedicated to bring you the latest as it comes in from the front. And Denver 7 is providing important perspective. We'll be joined by local experts explaining what the invasion means for the world and us here at home. A situation like the world hasn't seen uh, in decades. So we'll get to the U.S. and the response from other nations here shortly. We do have a lot to get to, though, because it is a Denver 7 weather action day as well. Still very cold outside, just five degrees. And there's a fresh layer of snow and some slick roads out there. We have team coverage this morning, so you know what conditions are like in your neighborhood. Let's start with meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo, because we are still waking up to single digits this morning. We are in fresh snow. I want to show you where it's snowing as we speak, where some of your toughest travel is going to be right now. On the east and northeast side of Denver, you can see there along 76 from Brighton, stretching over the airport, and then down along I-70 from Bennett to Byers. This is going to be our last wave of snow this morning before things start to clear out and we get a little bit more sunshine. But yeah, that drive is going to be tricky if you're heading there along Pena Boulevard. And Jason will have more on that coming up here in just a few minutes. We picked up a good one to three inches here within the last 24 hours. And Scott Eyes will start to clear out here uh, by midday, and we're going to see a bit more of a warm up. We're at least above zero this morning, right around zero to near five early on. We'll be closer to 20 by noon, so your wake up forecast is going to warm up a little faster today than yesterday. And then highs are going to be right around 20 to about 25 this afternoon. Some teens to low 20s in the mountains and foothills. So it's a little warmer. It's going to be a lot warmer this coming weekend. We'll take a closer look at that, plus another chance, Jason, for a little bit of light snow tomorrow on Friday. We have a couple of new problem spots. Unfortunately, one of them is going to over in the southeast side of town over at uh uh, Smoky Hill just off of E-470 at Main Street, uh, right by the mall. This is over off of uh, just north of Pena Boulevard and uh, right near DIA. And you can see some of the snow. So Ethan's been driving around in some of the snowy conditions and totally snow covered roads up that way right now. Take a look at the quad split. A couple of issues. Loveland Pass has reopened. That's good news. Bad news. I-25 out of the Denver Tech Center. Slow because of this crash between 225 and Hamden. We've had crashes on I-76 and 270 as well. That's why we see that all the headlights heading across Commerce City right now. And you can see on the drive times, it reflects it half an hour already into downtown from the north side. I-76 and 270 extremely busy right now. Same as I-70. So worse conditions because of that new snow that we saw this morning and still seeing right now really blanketing the roadways. You're looking at at least a half an hour to the downtown area from the tech center. The southbound side, not much better. Quiet on 470. We had earlier problems out there, but still dealing with snow covered roads just about anywhere you want to go. And as a reminder, you can always keep track of the weather and road conditions anytime you want by downloading the Denver 7 Plus app. We have a 24-7 weather stream going there. It is free for Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Android TV devices. Breaking right now, new video shows large explosions rocking parts of Ukraine. Overnight, Russian troops moved deeper into the country. As we take a live look from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine this morning, dark clouds are resting over the city. It is certainly an eerie scene. A few cars and uh, people walking around down there, uh, but they've been dealing with air sirens and Russian ballistic missile launches in the early morning hours, a scenario that Western government officials feared for weeks. We saw hundreds of thousands of Russian troops gather along mm -hmm. the border and run training drills, and now we're seeing a full-scale assault from Russia play out in real time. Overnight, an advisor to Ukraine's president said about 40 people have been killed so far in the attacks. Denver 7's Veronica Costa is watching every development coming in from our newsroom now, Veronica. And we just heard from the White House not too long ago, President Joe Biden, he's expected to address the nation at 10 this morning and we expect him to announce additional sanctions which is what he threatened would happen if Russia went ahead and invaded Ukraine. Now there is some major damage in many parts of Ukraine. Take a look at this video. This is from the capital smoke. there, coming from one of Ukraine's most important buildings. We're talking about its military intelligence center in Kyiv. You can imagine how critical this spot is to the country's response and you see it there. That dark plume of smoke, those flames, those folks there on your left trying to put that fire out as best they can right now. The Ukrainian death toll it stands at 40, but there are some Russian casualties too. Three Russian helicopters were shot down 
right near there in the capital. Meantime, what looks like a highway there in Ukraine, we're zooming in so you can get a better look. You see citizens fleeing as Russian attacks continue. And as more Russian troops make their way into that country, there are lines at cash machines, gas stations, airports even as people are trying to get out. And take a look at this other video. This is security camera video released by the Ukrainian border guard. It shows those Russian military vehicles on your right there. Those are tanks entering from Ukraine from Crimea. We're not only seeing one kind of military vehicle here. There are missile launchers, troop carriers and a lot more. That's a different kind of vehicle that you're seeing there. And late last night, Russian President Vladimir Putin called this a quote limited military action. But as we can see, it is anything but that troopers are coming from the north, south and east where they've been hosting military drills for weeks now. The invasion has drawn condemnation from the west. France's president just called what's happening a quote turning point for European history and pledged to stand by Ukraine's side. Of course, we're continuing to follow the latest. We'll bring you all the updates as the morning continues. We're in the newsroom. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Yeah, the fear is that this is just the start of what could be a long war. Colorado lawmakers are responding to the Russian invasion today. Senator Michael Bennett is calling on the U.S. and our allies to punish Rus Russian President Vladimir Putin for his unprovoked aggression. He's calling for more economic sanctions, exploring opportunities to support the Ukrainian resistance and to support democracy and the rule of law. Meanwhile, Representative Lauren Boebert is calling on the U.S. to regain our energy independence and also take immediate steps to export more of our own clean liquid natural gas to our European allies. Boebert says taking these steps will tame inf inflation and strengthen democracies around the world. So hard to imagine what people in Ukraine are going through right now. Denver 7, though, spoke to a local woman with family there, and she says she is terrified and just working to get in touch with her loved ones. It's, it's like something out of a horror movie. I mean, it's the worst nightmare scenario. They do have bomb shelters, and she said they're all packed and ready to go if, if and when they feel they, they need to. We asked them maybe they could travel to the West, maybe to safety, but I don't know. This is so dire. It's so gruesome. It's so scary. And you can hear how helpless she feels right now. We will be updating this story throughout the morning on air and on our website, the DenverChannel.com and through the Denver 7 mobile app. Well, this morning, ATF agents are helping Westminster firefighters figure out the cause of yet another home explosion. The second one this week in Westminster, eight townhouses along Sheridan Boulevard were destroyed by a fire yesterday afternoon. Investigators say two residents and a firefighter suffered minor injuries. People in nearby homes told us they could feel the heat from the flames. It was just a giant bloom. It, the whole sky. And then with the wind, it was coming just this way. So all the ash on the ground and everything, everything was just coming straight at us. Everybody's trying to help each other out, man. Grabbing dogs, moving them out the way, carrying old women down the side, walking everything. Helping out there. Uh, Westminster police say the complex hired a construction company to work on water heaters and furnaces, but it's not clear if that's somehow connected to the explosion. The scene was just two miles away from the deadly home explosion on Knox Court on Tuesday. Investigators do not believe the incidents are related. Lisa. It is right now uh, pretty chilly. We're right around zero. You'll see some neighborhoods uh, just above it here through the early morning. So it's another jacket, hat, gloves kind of day for the kids. Not as cold, though, as they're getting off the bus this afternoon. We'll see quite a bit more sunshine after some snow is falling this morning. Skies will clear. Highs, Jason, in the low to mid 20s. To southwestern Colorado and New Ray, right, right now where we have a lot of snow here, but from here south down past Silverton, Highway 550 remains closed down because they've had a lot of snow. That includes Coal Bank, Mollus, and Red Mountain Passes all closed down right now because of the adverse conditions. They're still trying to clear out the roadway. Also, part of Highway 160 in that area is still closed down as well. So while Jason gives us the big picture on the roads, we do have a crew driving out around the metro this morning, checking on some of the icy and frozen conditions in your neighborhood. We'll hear from them right after the break.